Hello, well I'm making a tool bag today, actually quite a small tool bag, but it will be excellent perhaps for your leather tools or if you just want to take a few tools with you somewhere. And here's a paper mock-up, so kept it small, kept it simple. It's one bit of leather wraps around two separate ends. Simple as that. So I've got a paper template for the ends. So the dividers are scratching a nice mark on the leather which should be sufficient for me to then cut out. Well I've got my two oversized ends so that's what size they should end up at. So what I need to do now is skive the leather on the back here on this outer margin so that then I can bend them to actually form a nice rounded end. So I've put a rounded roller head on the skiver here and I can then just hopefully put my work around it. That's given me a skived margin. It's a bit of a challenge for the machine because the wax obviously gets on the drive wheel here and makes it slip and squeal a bit. But um, it has given me quite a nice margin to work up to. So I'm now just skiving back to that line that I'd sort of scratched in. So I'm using a gradient off the machine where the skiving's been done, which is nice and accurate to act as a bit of a rest for my knife over the edge of the bench, then making sure I keep my hand nicely behind the blade. I'm able to work along and get a nice consistent skive going round. This way there's not a great ridge there. So I've skived all of this fairly aggressively actually going back trying to give it a gradual gradient on both pieces. I'm just giving this several passes with my spray bottle and the leather soaks it in very quickly because I've taken in effect the wax surface off where I've been skiving. As you can see the water going in it will go dark on the other side so I know it's going through nicely which is what I want. So I'm just doing sort of a bit of manipulation now trying to bend this lever up a bit up to the sort of line that I scored so the line that's very roughly an inch off the edge and just getting this lever flexing so that when I do come to put it in the mould and try and bend it it will bend happily. <laughs> <laughs> That's the principle, because obviously one's trying to get it the whole time to go up. So that's the mould it will be going into. And you can begin to see what will happen. That will get pressed down. So the clamping part, you can use G-clamps, you can use a combination of like hammers and hammer it down. Or if you have a, a press, you can pop it on a press. Now I have a four ton press, so I'm going to put it on that. And this barely fits under here as it happens, so it's not totally ideal. But I think I can sort of do a bit of squishing and wadging. <laughs> and try and get most of it underneath. So that has actually sort of worked. That's my end piece. It's got quite a nice smooth margin there. It's obviously a bit ruffled where I come to the corners. If I was making this formal again, I think I'd actually make it a bit tighter fit around here. I can do a little bit of manipulation on there in a minute. So I've popped a couple of G clamps on this and it would just help keep the pressure on. I'm just trimming off the excess now and I'm able to use the outer mould frame as like a guide. So I get a nice sort of even kind of cut or at least at the right sort of height. Well here it is about 12 hours later and it's definitely taken the shape well. So I'm going to take it out. It's quite a tight fit. There we are. 
and yeah that's done what I hoped it would do it's got a good wall all around it so one more to do I'll let that dry off properly I've got here one of the clicker dies that I made so it's a bit of two point steel wheel die just mounted in a block of wood and I'm going to use this to cut out a shape in this bit of leather I've just been thinning off so it's a bit of a complicated shape so it's quite useful having a, a die that will do this so I'm using my four ton master tools press there it goes so that's cut that shape out very quickly and easily there you are, and I've just bent the shape over it's to hold this um, case lock fitting so I'll be able to rivet that on so I've cut out an oblong of leather and at the moment all I've done is literally just uh, placed these ends on and clamped them with some little clamps and it just helps me visualize the whole thing it's looking pretty good size wise actually and it also helps me begin to visualize the flap which I think I'll probably be shortening very slightly so I'm just fixing this latch on the front here and I'm going to use the traditional copper saddler's rivets just a little tip here you can polish up the rivet heads on a strop and they come up really well so to set these saddler rivets I'm using a setting tool which is basically a, a metal rod with a hole in it and first thing is just to get them into position I should just add when I cut out this square I did also scythe down where it wraps around the ends so I did the same thing as I did with the ends I used my machine to start the scythe and then I finished the rest by hand get a nice taper and to stop it being too thick and clunky at the edges so this tapers off quite nicely and then I go over with my rounded end the ball pane end of the hammer and I just make sure it's nice and smooth to the touch. It does sort of recess it as well as it's sinking into the leather a bit. And that's now all very firmly fixed on, which is great. Out comes the glue pot and I'm going to glue the ends on far to a bit of riveting and sewing. So it's fairly absorbent leather. So I'm just going over it twice to get a fair coating. This is the other end of the bag latch and I've got this top sort of peak done by using a belt end cutter. I think the smaller pegs might tend to mark the lever so I'm going to be a bit judicious with those. So I've hammered that glue down, put some pegs on, I'll let that now um, go off properly and then I will probably put some rivets in next. There we are. That immediately sort of holds it a bit and then obviously I will trim it just like before and hammer it over. So I'm just going around now levelling up the two seams and this will make it easier for me to get the right depth for my stitching so I'm just using the skiving knife and going around. So these rivets are now in, so underneath Got them there and there and ditto the other side. And again, I'm using as before, one of these Montana refillable markers. I find very good. Apply some dye and then just burnishing up my edge a bit with a wooden slicker. So I'm gonna hand stitch these edges and I'm just sinking a channel on the outside because that's where there'll be most abrasion on the inside is not so much of a problem. So I'm just using a grooving tool here. So I'm just popping a few stitches in here and um, doing saddle stitch. So it's nice and strong. Stitches will lock each other in. And I've recessed, as I say, on the outside. So like that, they will be protected from any sort of like external abrasion or anything. So a fair bit to do here, I'll just carry on. I'm just rounding off the corners of the bag lid here. Makes it all look a bit neater, so just using a little punch here. 
So I've just been using my scratch shawl to line up the catch and put my holes in there a bunch so I can now rivet this on and what I'm doing actually here is I'm putting the tab both sides and that will more evenly spread the sort of load if you like of the pull. Just test this latch make sure it's gripping yeah it's under a bit of tension which is what I want on this so that's the latch on. I'm going to be going for a top handle on this bag and I've just been doing a little bit of experimentation just to sort of work out the handle geometry and essentially it's going to be a nice strip of oak bark leather which feels very nice on the hand enough clearance underneath but not so much that the handle sticks up madly so I may take that down a tad and what I have then done I want the pressure to be sort of on the rivets and on the leather so I'm putting the handle underneath the top of the case there but what I'm also doing and I'll show you closer as I do it I'm French skiving inside on this side and inside on this side of the bag lid and that will make the strap parts actually sort of settle down more gradually. This is the French um, shave tool I'm using but again if you don't have one of these you can just use a skiving knife. Tap my little guide mark, pull off the double-sided tape I had there as the marker and making sure I'm well over a leg of my table so that my anvil can soak up the pressure. If you don't have it on something solid it all bounces. And that's my hole for the strap on that side. Same thing on this side. So just to show you this uh, French skiving knife, so essentially what I'm doing, just double check on my little sample handle here that I'm going to do this the right way. I want to take a little bit of shaving off on the inside in each case. So what I want to do is just go along there and not take very much but just round it off a little bit each side and it stops it being such a harsh sort of graduated side. And then I just do the same thing on the underside. So I'm just marking through for the handle rivets now. So I'm using two saddler's rivets on each side. I think one would actually be perfectly good, but I'm partly doing it so decoratively it matches up with the two rivets on the latch. So hopefully that's going on there. Yep, and that's my handle. So that's working fine. Very happy with that. Inside. There you are. So there you have it. One finished tool bag. And I'm very pleased the way this one's turned out. It's always a little bit hit and miss when you try something for the first time. But that's a nice little bag. It's actually for my spoon carving tools. So this will be carrying an axe, um, a couple of rolls, leather rolls of spoon knives and my lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get the priorities right, eh? Anyway, yeah, nice compact bag. Nice and strong, all lovely veg tan, and um, will have a very long life, I'm sure. Okay, well, thanks very much for watching, and if you want to see what I do next, please subscribe. <laughs> okay then, bye-bye, <laughs> see you next time.